Thank you, Harriet. Good morning. Good morning. We, um, what a handsome fellow. Who is that? Who, is that? Is that Rick's phone? Can, you t can we turn that down, Rick? It's off. Is that Bob's phone? It's off now? Well, I tell you, Billy's not here and you just go to pieces. I still hear it. I'll wait, till that, I'll wait till that stops. I need a drink. There we go. Are we okay now? Let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. Great. Maybe we can edit out the rest of that. Huh? Is that still doing it? No, no, no. Somebody, else. No, somebody else had a cell phone over here. Oh, that was okay. All right. So we're all right. Well, anyway, um, glad you're here. I see a lot of people are not. I hope that uh, everybody isn't coming down with what I've had for the last week and a half. And Dawn is not here because she's down with what I had. I generously shared it with her. And... Um, so we have a number of people. Billy woke up, Billy Thatcher woke up this morning and she's got it. Nothing to do with coronavirus. We're just 
got one of those typical midsummer bugs, and uh, we we uh, this too shall pass. We'll, but we've got a great service for you this morning. Well, Jesus is here, and that's the important thing. And uh, we've got some some good music. Uh, we're going to hear from Margot Smith in just a little bit. And uh, Billy's not here to sing, so uh, Kevin is going to pick up and sing the hymns for us. Let us pray. It'll be fine. I'm, I'm depending on a downpouring of the Holy Ghost, I'll tell you. Okay, uh, but I wanted to uh, go over a few announcements with you before we get started. Um, I was bailed out last week, but I had nobody to bail me out this week, so you're stuck with me. Uh, my son-in-law, Scott, was here. Uh, we had two folks two weeks in a row preaching from uh, what used to be Eastern University up in St. David's, Pennsylvania, uh, Reverend Chris Schoenwolf, who was here two weeks ago, uh, preached for us and uh, did a really wonderful job. And she graduated from there. And Scott, who was here, my son-in-law, who was here last week, got his PhD from there. And so we uh, had two people from that institution uh, in, in two weeks. So that, that was a, an interesting thing that's never happened before. Um, it's, not our, it's not our plan to put them on the mission list, but just... Interesting fact. So, uh, also speaking of the mission list, we will have uh, one more week after this for you to support Operation Shoebox, and a number of you participate in that. I know, and it's near and dear to your heart. Dawn goes on every Monday, and I know that the L- L- Landermans go, and um, um, Mary Mary Ann Klusendorf goes, and probably a couple of other people that aren't popping into my mind at the moment, but. Um, it's a really important ministry, and you've been generous so far this month, and we, we hope that you'll continue to, uh, to do that. Um, also, I wanted to uh, tell you that the flowers on the altar, the flowers in the vases, are there in honor of the anniversary, uh, the 61st wedding anniversary of Penny, Penny and Joe Stinton. So how about that? I, I told them that uh, because somehow or another between Rick and I, we did not get that 61st wedding anniversary thing in the newsletter that we would sing happy, and I said I would, but I won't do that. Uh, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary Joe and Penny. Happy anniversary to you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll all be back here for the 71st and do it all again. How's that? All right. Two, two very great people. Uh, we will be having our Holy, next Holy Communion on August 1st. And it's the first time I think we're going to go back to trying to do our normal passing of the plate and we're going to not use those little tear-off type things, so um, that'll be a, a little bit of change, so I forewarn you on that. Our next uh, movie night is the 23rd of July, and uh, we'll be having the, uh, uh, starring Matt Damon, it's the movie about the uh, the zoo, where the family moves into the zoo, and they uh, bring back their son from the edge of all kinds of problems and so forth. It's a great movie, so uh, join us join us for that. If you have not yet signed up for the Celebration of Life uh, for Rose Reitmeyer, uh, that's going to be taking place on Saturday, August 14th. It's a little while a ways away, but there's a sign-up sheet out there, and we'd like to get a count because we're going to have a little luncheon after the, uh, after the service here in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock. So I hope you'll come out. Rose was such a sweet lady. Uh, uh, when we used to have coffee hour, I used to sit every Sunday and talk with her a little bit, and uh, she's one of my favorite people to talk to on a Sunday morning. So uh, she's passed, and, and we want to remember her. And uh, I always say that if you come out and remember somebody else, maybe someday when you die, we might come out and remember you too. So uh, it would be a nice thing for you to come. Um, also, I had a call from my daughter and in Pennsylvania, and uh, I get calls from people asking for help for this, that, and the other thing, and people stop at the door, and 
I can't help everybody I'd like to. Uh, we help an awful lot. But this one broke my heart, and I, I wanted to share it with you and ask for you to uh, help if you can. Uh, this is for a family uh, in Pennsylvania. The, the young man is the uh, youth intern uh, at a church uh, that my daughter attends, and uh, he also is a seminary student. Uh, been there, done that. And I, I remember back in those days, I was married, and you know we were trying to piece things together and buy groceries and pay bills and rent and uh, pay the seminary fees. It's not easy. I'm not complaining. We did it and worked hard to do it. Uh, this family has taken that on, and, and uh, they're doing a great job at the church. And all of a sudden, all kinds of things have, have hit them. They have lost uh, two children in less than a year. Um, they had one, one child who was stillborn. And uh, right after that, <coughs> excuse me, right after that, uh, their daughter, who was two years old and had a neurological uh, disease that she had from birth, passed away. So they, they lost the child of being stillborn, and then shortly after that they lost, they lost their, uh, their little daughter, Rose. And um, Shirley Rose was her name. And uh, it's, it's an impossible thing. You know, we, we've faced this in our church a couple of times back when uh, the uh, man who was our building superintendent of this construction project uh, lost his son to a, a motorcycle accident. Uh, we took up a collection and we paid for his funeral, which was, I don't know, $2,800 or something like that. And that was a miracle and, and much, much appreciated by that family. Their, I think their little boys were two and three at the time that their daddy died. And then, of course, when, when our friend uh, Billy Field died, uh, you all stepped up to the plate. Not only did we pay for Billy's funeral, and, and he's buried right out here on, on our property, uh, but we've also been helping with groceries and birthday gifts and so forth. Uh, we've raised almost $8,000 to... Uh, to help the field family uh, over the uh, over the course, so uh, we've done this before. Um, that's been with people kind of geographically closer to us, so I understand this if you're not interested or you can't. Uh, but I'd like to help this family. Uh, they're they're scratching for money to bury this little girl and uh, to medical expenses for the nursing care and everything. Have them in a hole, and uh, I'd like to try to do something. The one thing we're doing, I talked to Penny Stinton about this yesterday, and Penny's come up with a beautiful uh, prayer shawl that we're going to be dedicating and mailing off to them. And I'd also like to uh, send them a check and, and help them with, with the burial expenses and uh, whatever else they need. It's up to them what they, what they use it for. But I, I know because of my daughter and the contact she has and this young man's work in the church that it will be... Uh, it will be much appreciated and it is much needed and it will be used properly. So uh, if, if you are in a position to help uh, this, this family, uh, their name is, uh, the man's name, the young man who's a theological student is Nathan and uh, his wife's name is Faith. That's Nathan and Faith Titus and they live in New Holland, Pennsylvania where my daughter lives. And... Um, I'm, I'm going to let you either drop something in the offering plate, but mark it clearly what it's for. Uh, or uh, there's a little basket out in the narthex on the literature table that's for prayer requests. You could put it in there if you'd like to do it that way. And if you didn't come ready, but you, your heart says you want to do something, uh, you can mail it to the church. We won't mail this out till the end of this week. So you could either drop it by the office or, or mail it to the church, and we'll, in, we'll include it all in one check and and send it to them. Um, I have a. I, I know you can't you can't see it you can't see it from there, but this is this is the little girl here that passed away. She's just a a, a doll, and uh, it just this kind of stuff breaks my heart because you know how I love kids, and that's why we have the infant and toddler pantry, and and I I just can't. I know maybe some of you have lost a child. Uh, Thank God I have not, or I probably wouldn't be standing up here. I'd be a mess. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a heartbreak, and I just can't imagine what this family's gone through, not once, but twice. And uh, to have those two funerals to take care of and the medical expenses is just, 
crazy. So uh, if you're if you're able to help in any way, uh, that would be that would be great. If you're watching uh, on streaming video and you'd like to mail something in, uh, that would be great. Or call us and uh, can we do this on a credit card, Mary? Or is that not something we do, Mary? Can, we can't do that on a credit card. No. Okay. Okay. Um, if, it, if it's $10,000 or more, Mary will fly out to your house and pick up the check. <laughs> okay. Anyway, no, that's, a, that's all right. But it's, a, it's a, just a very sad thing. A, does it ever wonder you how people are able to stand under some of this stuff? I mean, the things I've seen in 50 years and, and the things I've seen people go through and the heartbreak and with little ones as well as seniors and friends and whatever it just uh, I remember when I was um, up in Middleborough Massachusetts two police officers who became friends of mine in the Middleborough Police Department they were married for about two years and um, they didn't think they'd ever be able to have a child as a matter of fact they were told they wouldn't and um, they had a little baby and the little baby didn't make it. And I remember going to the cemetery with them, and I remember that awful, awful day. It's etched in my brain, and uh, the heartache of that, and the, the weeping, and what that, and that was the last chance. The, there never was another child. And uh, so, as much as I love the Lord, and as much as I believe in Him with all my heart, and my salvation is in His hands, and so is yours. Uh, when I get up there, I still have a few questions I want to ask management. <laughs> so things, I, things I are beyond my, my scope of, of understanding. So um, you're probably wondering why I didn't mention the centerpiece on the altar this morning. Uh, that is a boo-boo centerpiece. Um, there was changes on the July order of people buying flowers and when those changes took place, we changed them in-house, but I forgot to change it down at the flower shop. So when I went to pick the flowers up yesterday, we had not only the vases, but they said, oh, we've got a centerpiece. And I said, no. They said, yes. So um, we, uh, we have a, a boo-boo centerpiece. So I hope you enjoy both the beautiful flowers for the Stinton's anniversary and Keo's boo-boo centerpiece. Kevin O'Connell.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm not going to sing opera. I'm a country singer. And I hear Kevin can't catch a fish, but he sure plays the piano good, doesn't he? Woohoo! I like it. Okay, Kevin. This is an old song, and I'm sure some of you, I'm sure, will know it. And I've never done it before, so let's do it, Kevin. This world is not my home I'm only passing through My treasures are laid up Somewhere beyond the blue And the angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh Lord you know that I have no friends like you And if heaven's not my home Then Lord, what am I gonna do? And the angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh Kevin, you do something I have a loving mother Living up in glory land And if heaven's not my home Well, I gotta shake my mama's hand She's waiting there for me At heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh, Lord, you know that I have no friend like you And if heaven's not my home Then Lord, what am I gonna do? The angels beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore Oh Lord, you know That I have no friend like you if heaven's not my home Then Lord, what am I gonna do? And the angel beckon me From heaven's open door And I can't feel at home In this world anymore And I can't feel at home In this world anymore I think we were on the edge of having church there. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Margo. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We worship him together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day our God is making. This is the time when God is present. This is the moment when forgiveness flows and life is renewed. Let's stand and back Kevin up here. Yeah, help me out, guys. In, In the, the dark, dark of the midnight, midnight have, have I, I all, 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 Some people are singing without moving their lips. In some cases, in some cases, that's not a bad thing. Yes. In the, in the dark, dark of the midnight, I have oft hid my face, face while the storms howl around me, and there's no hiding place. In the crash of the thunder, precious Lord, hear my cry, hear me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, 
Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast Let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by Many times Satan whispered There is no need to try For there's no end of sorrow There's no hope by and by But I know thou art with me And tomorrow I'll rise When the storms never darkens the skies Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe Till the storm passes by When the long night has ended and the storms come no more Let me stand in thy presence On that bright, peaceful shore In that land where the tempest never comes Lord, may I dwell with thee Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever From the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Keep me safe till the storm passes by Thank you, you may be seated let us pray together. Holy God, as the light of the sun is transformed by plants into energy, so we transform your divine light into love and service. Open our hearts so we may draw down the light, fill us with your presence, and turn our acts of kindness, words of blessing, gifts of service into light for others. Amen. My heart can sing when I pause to remember A heartache here is but a stepping stone Along the path that's always winding upward This troubled world is not my final home Oh, but until then, my heart will go on singing. And until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold that city. Until the day God calls me home the things of earth are gonna dim and lose their value and if you recall they're just borrowed for a while and things of earth that caused this heart to tremble Remember there Will only bring a smile So until then 
my heart will go on singing and until then with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold that city until the day God calls me home until the day my eyes behold that city until the day God calls me home Thank you, Margo. Let us confess our sins before our Heavenly Father. We come humbly before you, O Lord, confessing that we need spiritual renewal. Putting band-aids on the sins of our spirits will not do, Lord. We know that we need a thorough overhaul, a total reconstruction of our spirits that once came so fresh from your creative hand. Our minds need adjusting that they may be more in tune with the truths that come from you. In short, we need total renewal, O oh God, and only you can adequately give us this blessing. Therefore, we ask your forgiveness and we await the ministry of your Holy Spirit. The Gospel of John records Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. sorely tried lift up your eyes here cometh your help it is Jesus who you has died rise and be healed in the name of Jesus let faith Arise in your soul, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will cleanse and make you whole. If by faith you reach out to him, he will meet your every need he will respond to the cry of your heart he will touch you and set you free rise and be healed in the name of Jesus let faith Arise in your soul, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will cleanse and make you whole. prayer shawl we have just one today and this is for little Shirley Rose Titus and uh, her family gracious heavenly father 
We can't even begin to imagine the pain that this family has been through, the loss of two children and the financial burdens that they carry. But we know, Heavenly Father, that the little ones are your pride and joy. The little ones are so close to your heart. And we know that this little one is in your arms, safe in that place that you've created for her. Comfort her family. Allow this beautiful prayer shawl to be a blessing to them. Let, it know, let them know that it comes with our love and our prayers and our hopes for their future. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a beautiful, beautiful day. The sun is shining. It warms us. It gives us hope. The light makes us feel better. And we are grateful. And in this beautiful day, we have your wonderful presence. You're here to to love us to cheer us, to give us hope. The world may be spinning out of control. The world may not understand. The world may reject those things which it needs the most. But you still keep trying. You still keep loving. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You're always there. You call to us and say, rise, be healed. You call to us and you say, believe in my son and eternal life will be yours. You have given all for us. Your only son, his very life, his very shed blood for us. We certainly don't deserve it. We certainly haven't earned it. There is nothing we could do to to thank you for it. But we come to this place today not out of obligation, not out of a sense of membership or belonging, but we come to this place just to be with you, to have you wrap your arms around us again, to send your Holy Spirit to infuse us with those amazing gifts that it brings, to allow our lives to to manifest good things, love and joy and peace and kindness, to be what the world cannot be or understand. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to anoint us with that sense of the Spirit's presence. We pray today for those in our congregation and our church family and within our knowing who are sick, who are struggling with illness, who are recovering from surgery. We pray for those families who are traveling and uh, need your protection. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our church in the midst of a world that sees churches closing their doors and people not understanding the value or the purpose of church anymore. We, we pray, Heavenly Father, for a revival in the world and especially in this country. Father, for all that you have done for us in the past, we're grateful and thankful. And it gives us assurance that Great things are still ahead. Amazing things are still before us. Help us, Heavenly Father. Bring healing and strength and purpose and perseverance and all those things that are gifts according to your word. And help us to dig down and find faith again. For all that you have done, we are grateful. And for all that you are yet to do, we look forward with great expectancy. In the name of the one who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, in and out of our services over the last couple of weeks, we've had the offering. 
Uh, some weeks we've taken it at the door, some weeks we've taken it in-house, and it's kind of been kind of back and forth, back and forth, and I apologize for that. Uh, but we're trying to get back on our feet and back to normal operating and normal procedures again. And so this morning, those people standing in the aisle, they're here to take your morning tithes and offerings. So uh, we'll ask them to wait on you for those gifts at this time. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Heavenly Father, each step along our path, you've provided for us, cared for us. And now as a gift of thanksgiving, we come to your altar with these, our tithes and offerings. And we ask that you would bless them, multiply them, use them in your service, that many may come to know and to receive the love of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. scriptures come from several different selections. The first is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Ephesians 4, chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Luke 6, verse 13, but love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Colossians 3, 12 through 13, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If, if anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. Finally, all of you will be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted. Brothers, be tender-hearted. Be courteous not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to do this, that you may inherit a blessing. And the last is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. This last song, I love it. It's slow, but I really do love the words. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing on my own. I've made mistakes and I sometimes slip I'm just common flesh and bone But I'll prove someday just what I say I'm of a special kind For when he was on the cross I was on his mind and a look of love was on his face Thorns were on his head Blood was on that scarlet robe All stained in crimson red Though his eyes were on the crowd that day He looked ahead in time For while he was on the cross I was on his mind he knew me yet he loved me he whose glory makes the heaven shine I'm so unworthy of such mercy for while he was on the cross I was on his mind he was on the cross I was on his mind You're right. That is a beautiful song. One of my, that's one of my favorites, too. Think about that. When he was on the cross, he was thinking of you. Not just people, not some multitude, not some crowd, but think about it. When he was on the cross, he was thinking about you or me. That's an amazing, amazing thought. So it is a beautiful song. May the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God. A number of years ago, uh, in a church, we ran a program called Random Acts of Kindness. And we had printed up little cards, and we gave them out to people to do something nice for somebody and then give them a card, and on the card it had the name of our church and said, you've just received a random act of kindness from a member of whatever the church was at the time. I can't remember. And... Uh, it was a good program. People ran around, you know, and they would let somebody go in front of them in the grocery line or whatever, and uh, they'd hand them a card. So a lot of nice things happened to people, people that were unexpected, that they, they got some kind of a kindness or a, a love gift from, from somebody they didn't even know. And I, I often thought about what a change that might make in somebody's life because somebody's nice to you. You know, we, we live, you and I, we live in a senior community where, you know, just driving around a traffic circle, you know that not everybody's nice. <laughs> you know, you, you go to the doctor's office and you're sitting there for an hour and a half waiting for an appointment that was an hour and a half ago, and uh, 
you're wondering, does this guy know how to keep a calendar? And if he doesn't, how is he going to take care of me? And it's hard to be nice, to be kind. So we, we look at, at the world we live in, and, and sometimes we have to work at these random acts of kindness. The reality is that kindness is something that we aren't supposed to do in random acts, but it's supposed to be part of our personality. It is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that that you and I are supposed to manifest in our lives. Uh, The definition of kindness is, kindness is purposeful, voluntary action undertaken with sensitivity to the needs or desires of another person and actively directed toward fostering their well-being. It's just... Be nice to somebody. Be, be there for them. You know, oftentimes when we face a, a, a sickness of a loved one or, or the death of somebody in our neighborhood, we just would like to do something, but we don't know what to do. It's pretty easy. Just go to them and be with them and, and listen to them. Your very presence is enough. The fact that you cared enough to, to send them a note that you you recognize they were going through a difficulty is all that it really takes for you to show kindness. This is part of God's design and God's plan. When he created us, you know, it isn't God that messed this whole thing up, it's us. And when he created us, we were created to be kind, to show loving kindness, to help other people. Proverbs says, what is desired in a man is kindness. Why? Why would God consider this trait important? Why would he, he think that we should be kind? Because it's reflective of who he is. It's reflective of, of God himself for us to be kind. Because God shows his loving kindness to us. Psalm 25 verse 6 says, Make an interesting, makes an interesting point about kindness. It says, remember, O God, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. God wants us to realize that he is kindness. He doesn't just do kindness. He is kindness. And as he indwells us, we are to be kind as well. It isn't an option. It isn't a random choice. It isn't something we do because we have a programmed card from the church. It's something we have to do in order to reflect the God who is supposed to be living inside of each and every one of us. Ephesians chapter 4 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. One of the most difficult ways of being kind is is to try to be kind to somebody who hasn't been kind to you. To show love, to show respect, to show mercy to somebody who has shown you no love, respect, or mercy. To extend yourself to to somebody who has not extended themselves to you. To reach out in, in kindness and love when the other has not. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. I don't know if you've ever looked at it, but the standard of mercy, the standard of kindness that you extend to other people, the way that is extended by you to others, is the way God will give you mercy. The way you judge other people is the way God will judge you. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged, for surely as you judge, so shall your Father in heaven judge you. In other words, you set the standard of judgment for yourself. It isn't God who has these hard and fast, awful rules and, and, uh, and these obligations that you have to fulfill and they're inflicted on you. God is this amazing system where he says, okay, I'll tell you what. The way you treat other people, the judgment you lay on others, that's the way I'm going to treat you. That's what I'm going to do for you. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We forgive our trespasses 
for our sins as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. In other words, we set the standard by which on that great white throne judgment day, we will be judged. It's, a, it's a, an amazing concept of justice. We set our own standard for justice. Kindness was Jesus' ministry. From the very first act of ministry at Cana in Galilee, when his mother bugs him about creating wine out of the water, well, she didn't ask him to do that, but that's what he did. From that very first act, Jesus is doing kind things. You know, they're running out of wine. What's a nice thing to do? I'll make some more. When Jesus finds a little girl whose family is weeping and at her loss, what does he do? He takes compassion on them. He shows kindness to them. He raises the little girl from the dead. He tells it in his stories. The Good Samaritan is a story of kindness. Not just any kind of kindness, but kindness to one who would not receive kindness from a Jew. The Samaritans and the Jews were separated, you know, and, and so to show kindness to a Samaritan was, was not the right thing to do. So Jesus is showing in this story, not just taking care of a guy who's been beaten up and take him to the inn and pay for his care and all that kind of thing, but to show kindness to somebody who normally wouldn't even be kind to you in the Good Samaritan story. Jesus and the uh, whole ministry that he carried on is constantly showing love and kindness to those around him. Mary and Martha, when they lose Lazarus, Jesus calls Lazarus forth from, forth from the tomb. It's evoked by his kindness and love. Kindness. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you, Jesus said, that I go away. For if I go away, the comforter will come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. What Jesus is doing is, as he is crucified, as he leaves this earth, he goes to sit at the right hand of the Father. And didn't you often think, why did he have to leave? Why couldn't he stay here? Why couldn't we go to some big arena and hear him speak? Why couldn't there be a great evangelistic service and Jesus would preach and thousands would come to believe in him? Or, or there'd be a big healing service and everybody was sick, cancers would be healed and dementia would be healed and Jesus would be doing all these amazing things. It wasn't necessary because Jesus had a plan. Jesus was going to go to the Father and he was going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that that spiritual power which Jesus applied to all those things and that kindness that he applied to all those things, that power was with us when he was here, but would be in us. In other words, every believer would receive and have indwelled in them this power to be kind themselves, to be loving themselves, to reach out and, and minister and heal and do the things that he did. Greater works than I have done shall you do because I go to the Father, he said. See, where the church is weak and powerless, where the church is not doing anything that catches the world's eye anymore, Jesus is saying, you know, I don't know why, because you ought to be doing greater things than I did. There ought to be people who are fed and clothed and Rose, rise from the dead and all kinds of miracles taking place. Amazing things ought to happen because I go to the Father. It is the, the Holy Spirit who builds, who creates, who does all of these things. It is the Holy Spirit who built this church, the Holy Spirit who has ministered to thousands of children through our, our program in the infant toddler pantry. It is the Holy Spirit and love and kindness which has month after month after month given to every sort of cause. It is the Holy Spirit who has buried the dead, as I talked about earlier. It is that love, that kindness that indwells us through the Holy Spirit, through the gift of... And it's because he went to the Father. It is because he has sent this Holy Spirit, this comforter, to live in those who would believe. In John chapter 14, he says, 
And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. We are not powerless. Kindness did not end when Jesus rose and went to the Father. The work of the Holy Spirit and these gifts or fruit of the Holy Spirit did not stop because the scriptures were canonized. It only just began. Man has turned away from it. If you wonder what's happening in the church today, it's because the Holy Spirit and this indwelling power and this ability to be kind and loving is not our priority anymore. Churches became building conscious, programmatically conscious, doctrinally conscious, and forgot about their relationship with the Master. And to allow that, that power, that indwelling Holy Spirit, that indwelling kindness and love and mercy and long-suffering and patience to come inside of us. I mean, some of the most angry people I've ever seen in my life, I've seen in church meetings. This is not the work of the Holy Spirit. This is not church. Over the last couple of months, I've been saddened by the closing of churches, once strong churches. You know, now we're of an age, we think, oh, this is going to go on forever because it always has. No, it's not. We are in trouble. And we are in trouble because the Holy Spirit is not being manifest by us, by the people. We are, are refusing to take our responsibility to show kindness even when people aren't kind to us, to show love even when people aren't loving to us, to be respectful even when we don't understand their lifestyle or the way they operate. God does not let you set doctrinal standards that negate his command to show love, joy, peace, long-suffering, and manifest that Holy Spirit. You have no right to make a rule the church has no right to make a rule that oversteps the command to show forth the anointing and the, the power of the Holy Spirit to those around you. And so churches are closing because they're not doing what God called the church to do, to be Christ in the world. To be Christ in the world, you have to use the power of the Holy Spirit to manifest him in the world. And that power of the Holy Spirit would make you kind, would make you loving. Not all the time. We're not impeccable paragons of perfection and we're not always going to do the right thing and we're going to make mistakes. It's kind of like Peter. He's outside getting warm by the fire and they come by and they say, hey, he was with that Jesus guy. Oh no, I never even knew him. Again and again, he, he denied him when he needed to step up. And the church, through its actions, have again and again denied him and refused to step up. And so the church is dying. The church is in trouble. We used to have a, a dear lady here, who uh, Florence Deck, who's moved to Tennessee. And at one time, I was youth pastor at Grace Alsace Church, Reformed Church up in uh, Berks County, Pennsylvania. And her husband... Uh, who was a little older than I am, he uh, was the assistant pastor, and Dr. Paul Rahm was the pastor. It was a strong church. It was like 1,500 to 2,000 members, a beautiful stone edifice. I mean, you know, you think this is a beautiful church. This thing was like the, the Gothic church, the beautiful stonework, the pulpit where you walked up and the, the steps into, you know, you were way up above uh, to preach. I mean, it was just gorgeous. It's closed. It's closed. That place where, where her husband and I worked back in the early 70s that was so powerful and so, so full of life is gone. A couple of weeks ago, the church I was ordained in in downtown Reading, Pennsylvania, which was about 30,000 square feet, St. Mark's Reformed Church, that church held its last service ever. It's closed. It's gone. 
So across this country, church after church are closed. And it's not just in churches. We're seeing this in educational institutions too. They, they're combining, they're merging. Um, at one time, the, the United Church of Christ, which was the com- combining of the Reformed Church and the Congregational Church, uh, merged. And when they merged in 1959, and the Congregational Church was part of that, when they merged in 1959, there were 2.1 million members. Today, there are less than 700,000. What happened to all those people? Why has this happened? Because we have gone man's way and we have listened to the, the pseudo-intellectual teachings of, uh, of eggheads in seminary and we have not listened to the Holy Spirit. We have not believed in what the Spirit is teaching the people. Let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches, the book of Revelation says. So today, we need to be kind. And as we're being kind, we might as well be the rest of the things that the Holy Spirit allows us to be. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. These are all kindnesses. They're all things that we ought to reflect. And do they come easy? No. You've got to work at it. You have to work at it. It's not easy to be kind to those that are outside the realm of our comfort zone. But we must. It isn't a choice. It isn't an option. It isn't something you get to decide. It isn't your position which one of the rules you want to obey or which one of these things you want to manifest. The reason people don't believe in the church is the church is supposed to be this and they see what the church is and they say, wait a minute, there's a big gap. There's a big gap between what we are supposed to be and what we turn out to be. Last week when my good buddy the skipper was here, I wanted to preach this sermon, but I didn't feel well, so Scott was here, and that worked out great. And I, I, meant, I made mention that when uh, Scott and Danny first met at college, I was not real sure about this guy. I was reformed. He was a conservative Baptist. That was anathema to me. But gradually, over the course of time, I learned to to love this guy. I learned to care about this guy and his ministry. And then, like I told you, drove my daughter off to Paraguay as a missionary for eight years. That didn't make me too happy. But that was all me. What they were doing was what God called them to do. What they were doing was God's work. It was a great thing. And down inside of me was this feeling of pride and this feeling of goodness about what they were accomplishing. And our church up in in Michigan supported them in what they were doing. But it is kindness that breaks the ice. It is love that breaks the ice. And when I could see the, the love that Scott had for my daughter and for their children and for the church and for his job in ministry, it kind of changes you a whole lot. I don't let him know that too often. I don't want it to go to his head, but uh, no, he is a, he is a very a good, a good man. And so what you liked about him last week whether he even knew it or not, that was the Holy Spirit. That was the kindness. That was the love. That was the mercy. That was the long-suffering. That was the gift. And like that guy who followed the apostles around in the New Testament church and wanted to buy the Holy Spirit so he could heal people like they did, it isn't for sale. It comes by faith and faith alone. Well, What triggered all of this was the song that Skipper sang. He sung it a couple of times, mostly because I ask him to sing it every time he comes. 
but it's called We Can Be Kind by David Friedman. And if you weren't listening last week or you weren't here last week, these are the words. It, it's, it's not a great gospel song like Margot sang, but it's got a gospel message. So many things we can't control. So many hurts that happen every day. So many heartaches that pierce the soul. So much pain that won't ever go away. How do we make things better? How do we make it through? What can we do when there's nothing we can do? We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside, we need all the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we're there for each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Nobody really wants to fight. Nobody wants to go to war. If everyone wants to make things right, then what are we always fighting for? Does nobody want to see it? Does nobody understand? The power to heal is right there in our hand. We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we are kind to each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. And it's not enough to talk about it, not enough to sing a song. We must walk the walk about it, you and I, do or die. We've got to try to get along. We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside, we all need the same thing. And maybe we'll find, if we are kind to each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. And maybe we'll find true peace of mind if we always remember we can be kind. I think it's interesting that that message of the Holy Spirit gets sung for us by a guy from the Jewish temple whenever he comes. And it is such gospel, such Jesus teaching. I'm not saying he knows that or does it for that reason, but he becomes a vessel of God's Holy Spirit to us every time he sings this song. Because kindness is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's what's missing from relationships between husbands and wives, between mothers and dads and their children, between grandchildren and their grandparents, between church members, in communities, in politics. It's what's missing from our world. These gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if you'll go out of here today and, and you'll Recommit yourself to the Savior, the one who went to the Father, who went there because he wants to send you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. If you'll commit yourself to that, here's what he'll give you in return. Love, use some of that. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Amazing. It's all right there, available to us. And all we have to do is say yes to the one who brings the gift and hands it to us freely. Holy Spirit, come to this place. Pour upon us a bath of kindness. Help us to be loving and kind to those that we are at odds with. Help us to break down walls and build bridges. Help us to understand that everyone is not like us. Thank God. Help us to understand that we can have a world of different colors and different shades and different textures. As long as we put our heart and our soul, and our desires toward you. You are our Savior. You are our soon-coming King. 
And in your kingdom, in that place that you have prepared, there will be no hate, only kindness. There will be no separation, only love. There will be no sickness, no more crying, no more weeping. Only health and strength. For all that you have done, Father, we are grateful. For all that you are yet to do, Lord Jesus, come. We ask it in your precious name. Amen. Higher ground. That would be you, young man. Young man's not feeling so young. I went and joined the water skiing club. And I did it. And the man said, you're going to be hurting tomorrow. And I am. Let, let us pray. Plant my feet on higher ground. 